Yeah, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. We're now shifting our conversation to the no-fly zone order that President Muhammad Buhari issued as a response to all the security challenges we're having in the country, and specifically in Zamfara State, where about 200 girls, over 200 girls, were just rescued from bandits. And uh, joining us to discuss this are two political affairs analysts, uh, Alistair Wilcox, uh, joining us via Zoom. Good morning, sir. Mr. Wilcox, can you hear me? Good morning, and hope you are doing well. Yes, I'm good. That's Thanks right. for being here. Also, we have Ade. Yes, I can hear you. Good morning. Thank you. We also have Ade Misaka, a political affairs analyst. Good morning. Thanks good for joining morning. us. All right. I want us to first talk about the possible security implications of this order by the president. Well, uh, if the order was taken in good faith, um, it probably should cause um, cuts of supplies to, ban to terrorists. I don't want to call them bandits because bandits is just a watered-down description of these guys. These guys are terrorists. But for me, I probably want to go beyond that. Um, what prompted um, this declaration of the no-fly uh, no zone is Zamfara, the, the, the most volatile or the most active theater in this war on terror or insurgency crisis? No. Now like you start not, you now start asking yourself the questions that what form this is in the interest of the government is in the interest of Nigerians or is this just pure politics? Mm. Because for me, you declare no fly zone in Zanfa that just that has an airstrip. Nigeria has on Nigeria we have thirty one airports, twenty six um, thirty one air, airport 30, 30, 26 airports manned by fan, six airstrips, and Zanfa just has an airstrip. Yes, yeah, so now you ask me what about Kaduna? That has an airport. That issue of banditry is right there. What about Borno that has an air, that has an airport? Why no no fly zone? And if you are, if you come up with a no fly zone, um, in military term LF, um, LFZ, or probably call it an um, area exclusion zone AZ, you to enforce it, you're probably going to have what's called airline um, aircraft um, anti anti aircraft um, defense system in place. Do we have such in place in Zanfara, as we speak? And to enforce it, how many fighter jets are we going to deploy? To be, how many sorties are they going to conduct to really enforce this thing? If you really want, if you are, if you are so sure there's something going on there, I want to effect a no-fly zone. Now, and I ask, I sit down here and ask some basic questions. Where was the intelligence estimate or the special national intelligence estimate by Munguno, the NSA, that prompted Mr. President to come up with this declaration? And why was such no national intelligence estimate about, about um, Kaduna, about Kasina, about Bono, about Yobi, about Niger? So what's it about Zanfara? Right. We really will delve into you know, this issue you just raised, but I wanted to bring in uh, Mr. Wilcox here. Uh, Mr. Wilcox, can you hear us? Yes, I'm hearing you, but you can try and be a bit audible. Okay, so some, some people are concerned about this statement by, by the president because they feel it's just words that the federal government will not deploy or do not have the capacity to enforce this no-fly zone order. Do you agree with that position? Sorry, did you say who has been asked to enforce it? I'm asking you if you feel the government has the willpower and capability to enforce its no-fly zone order on Zamfara State, or if it's just words, as, as many people have described it? I, I wonder why people would describe it as words, because um, we have an issue on hand, a serious issue, and Zamfara State has been uh, one the epic center for banditry in the country. And so if uh, there's a security report, or there is a report to the fact that uh, there is um, infraction of the airspace, whereby the airspace is used to transport uh, arms and ammunitions to the bandits and the Aragami is coming up with the no flies on there. I wonder why anybody will want to fault that or wants to rubbish that position. I am for anything. Of course, uh, we, all, we are all victims. I mean, even though not directly, we are all victims of what's happening in the country. And nobody is happy with the fact that uh, the evil guys, the bad guys are holding uh, the, the, the nation to the juggler. And so if the government thing that comes up with a policy of no flying zone over Zamfara, I think it is something everybody should watch out, not to, not to condemn from ab initio.
Uh, the Air Force is uh, empowered to enforce the no-flying zone. The um, the DN the, the the NIA uh, that is National Intelligence Agency is empowered to monitor. The DSS has the role to play. Then not talking about the police and other agencies. So it's a combination of effort. And what is no flying zone supposed to do is to restrict access to the airspace within that uh, geographical uh, area where people will not where no flight will go through or no flight will uh, will will stop. Be it commercial or private uh, airline, be it helicopter or any form of airline, apart from maybe military asset that will be, uh, that can be used for monitoring purposes. So it's something that I think Nigerians should look up to and we look up with optimism, because if it is established that these bandits get their supplies through the air, and I think the only way to cut them off is to impose such a such a no fly But for me, I wonder how how uh, that will solve the problem. That is one thing. That is personally. Because um, uh, there's no airport in Zamfara. I don't think there's an airport in Zamfara. I don't know of the kind of airstrip that exists in Zamfara that has been used in the past. But if it is maybe uh, uh, airlines like uh, helicopters, that is smaller aircraft helicopters, or aircraft that will just fly over and drop things, I think uh, then we'll begin to look at it from that aspect. So that is why the Air Force needs to stop up their game and ensure that this policy, this no-fly zone policy works and works for the benefit of the country. All right, um, I'm going to go back to uh, the Amy Sakar. You had earlier mentioned um, uh, your thoughts on the capacity of the government to enforce a no-fly zone and all that. You know, some would argue that this might be using one stone to kill two birds, you know, stopping illegal mining at the same time uh, facing uh, insecurity. But I, I want you to respond to something that he mentioned. Um, if, you know, we have the capacity to enforce a no-fly zone, do you think that this is the answer to the, the security challenges that we're dealing with? You know, uh, with <coughs> when, when he said the Air Force has the capacity to deal, enforce a no-fly zone, I, I don't know if you noticed, I chuckled and I smiled because the last audit of um, the Nigerian Air Force, we know how many fights are just we have. It was, the, it was towards the twilight of General Sun's administration we just purchased um, IND MI-35 and 37. How many we have? I think they have three for VIPs, one for cargo. I think if you just look, maybe now maybe they have 30, 40 crafts to do that. How do you want to deploy five or six to give you like 100 sorties in a day over Zamfara? How many attack helicopters do you want to, do you want to deploy? Now you're talking, the Nigerian Army Air Wing is still, is a, is, a, is a work in progress. So you probably could not even draft in the Army to support you. There's no seaport or naval base, there, forward, or forward operating base for Navy there to support you. So why are we just lying to ourselves here? Yeah? We don't have the capacity to enforce a no-fly zone, even in, even in Lagos, even where there's airport. Now, not talk of Zamfara, that is far flung. Now, let's look at the geography. Um, you probably said something, illegal, mine, illegal gold mining. There's that something, but... The question is, we shouldn't have even gotten here in the first place because if the government knows what they should do and, um, and if they've been doing it, they, they, will, be, they will have crisis. They, you can't have a militarized zone like you have in the northeast and the northwest and you're not having or carrying out air surveillance. And to reduce the combative, um, uh, the combative and non-combative collateral damage, you should have deployed drones in the air to give you a recon and sometimes even attack. These things are not there. You just wake up in the morning because you want to flex muscles and power. You just give a pronouncement. Hmm. The airstrip in Zamfara, how, 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 how much is in use? If you want to fly, any commercial, anybody going to Zamfara now by here probably would need to get to Sokoto or Kasuna. So the problems that we're dealing with in Zamfara, will a no-fly zone be, you know, at least give some solution to it? It's a, a no-fly zone will not, for me, um, if you ask me for my own strategy or probably on my own opinion, a no-fly zone will not help. I said something, so I wrote something some few days ago on, on social media and it was echoed by governor of Bono State. We, we're in a critical situation. We, sometimes we've had allegations of compromise. Sometimes we even think, and it's even obvious that our, our security forces are, under, are overwhelmed. And I tell people this, and with, with no disrespect to Nigeria as a nation, with no disrespect to the military institution, which I so much believe in, and, and as far as the Hami, it's a constituency that I, I'm affiliated to. You see, we are on demand. The, 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 the force, the population of Nigerian military, Army, Navy, Air Force, is, is even under 200,000. Why in true sense, Army should alone should have at least 300,000 men, at least. There's nothing wrong if Nigeria has, we have one million standing troops. 
across the country. So we, we are on demand, and we are not even spending like a nation fighting war. Mm. And we are still buying things we don't need. We bought it, we purchased the Tucano in 2016 or 2017 that will be delivered in 2022, when we could as well could probably just... We, I, I keep saying it. Any right-thinking NSA and, any, and any, anybody in the procurement department of three branches of the military will tell you that if you want to end this war, you, you spend more on attack helicopters. And if you want to spend more on attack helicopters, if America will not want to give you or sell to you the fourth generation of, of um, Apache, you can stick with the first and second generation. That will help us. Okay. Um, Mr. Saka, uh, Mr. Wilcox, I'm coming to you in a bit, but I wanted to ask you, Mr. Saka, you mentioned that you, you don't think a no-fly zone will help solve Nigeria's insecurity challenges. And I ask why, because reports have shown that bandits get their supply of arms, ammunition, food through helicopters. So if you cut out their access to arms, ammunition, food, don't you think that's one way well, to that, help the anti-insurgency fight? That, that, that um, theory has, was, was, um, has been in circulation um, since 2013, 2014. You think it's not true? I'm not disputing that. In fact, if, if you want me to be ambitious, I probably even want to name names and even name countries that I probably think are, are, are involved in it. But I would not because I don't want to cause a diplomatic row between Nigeria and any other country. But for me, how did you get this intel? How did you know you got this intel thinking those guys brought the, were getting arms and supplies? But did you cut? Did you did you try cutting it off? Did you engage anyone? You can't just, you see, these are things, you, see, you don't pee on, on our faces and tell us it's raining. You can't, you see, this thing doesn't add up. What, where are the documentary evidence? Did, uh, were there anybody caught in the hat? Okay. All right. Let me um, bring in Mr. Yeah. Lester Wilcox here. Yeah, I, I, I want you to, you'd of course, respond to um, um, Mr. Saka. Um, he, of course, I shared his thoughts, you know, with regards to the capacity to enforce it and uh, the use, really, of a no-fly zone. Um, and of course, um, also go ahead and, and share your thoughts on something that he had also earlier mentioned. Um, what exactly is particular about Zamfara State and why didn't we have the same no-fly zone in other troubled states um, in the past? Uh, so quickly, um, respond to that, Mr. Wilcox. Hello, I can't, I can't, I can't quite get your, your it, the, the, the whole thing is uh, falling uh, back. All right, so I'm, I'm going to... So I can't get... I'm going to take the question again. I said, I, I want you to respond to uh, Demi Saka's thoughts with regards to the sense behind uh, and the capacity, really, to enforce a no-fly zone in Zamfara. And then second is, why exactly are we particular about Zamfara with the no-fly zone? Why didn't we have the same no-fly zone over other states in the north uh, that have uh, you know, had similar killings and kidnappings in the last five years? Well, if you can hear me, because uh, uh, there's a whole back, but I, I managed to get your question. If you can hear me, um, my position is this. Uh, when uh, Mr. Saka talked about the capacity of the Air Force has not been at par, then I wonder if he watched last year, uh, the Air Force, when the Air Force celebrated the anniversary, I think is this 60th anniversary or 50, I can't remember, when the Air Force celebrated the anniversary. And uh, if, if he has watched that program, which I think I took time off to watch, and under Sadiq, uh, the last chief of army, chief of air staff, the kind of advancement and the kind of um, procurement and armory that the air force has in their in their in their in their kit, he will not. He will, I'm sure he will change his mind about the capacity. Uh, this is a force that has been consistent in carrying out uh, attacks on the bandits in the, on the Boko Haram and other areas. In fact, when they lost one of their Fighter, fighter helicopter pilots. We all saw the display that was uh, that was happened. So, if we keep undermining our country and keep referring to the back, the the the, the time of the, that Jonathan purchased those is far gone, and the Air Force has gone far beyond that level. And um, it it will not be fair for any of us to come to and start rubbishing the, the the prestigiousness of the Nigerian Air Force on the capacity of our military. Yes, they overstretch. I agree. They overstretch. They are not supposed to be involved in so many things. We are even having more domestic war than we are having uh, external aggression. So they overstretch. They have, they have the capacity. As for capacity, it's not in doubt. Now, the logistics and how it is going to be done. Like I said, Zamfara has no airport. Look at what I said originally. Zamfara has no airport. So whatever flight is going to do, is either going to go from Sokoto 
or from Castina or from Mina, which is the operational base. And we are not talking about just running around the air. We are talking about uh, intelligence. If they have, I don't know the kind of um, air defense mechanism that Nigeria has. I'm not a, a military strategist. I don't know the kind of air defense mechanism Nigeria has if it covers the entire uh, uh, space. But I'm sure if, if in terms of aviation, uh, Nigeria, uh, ICAO and other countries rate Nigeria as one of the best in terms of navigational activities. Now, how effective it is, I cannot tell from here, but I know that they have a capacity. It has been made. About yes. Cutting off supply. Uh, no, no. Like, I think that point has been made already. I, I, I want you to speak on why we are particular about Zamfara. Why do, don't we have a similar no-fly zone of Bauchi and Borno uh, states and other states in the north that have had, you know, similar uh, crisis and insecurity situations in the, in, in the last couple of years? Oh, okay, okay. Okay, I can hear you. I can hear you a bit better now. Um, talking about uh, military strategy, I am not in a position to say when and where a, a starting military uh, situation will take place. Now, why I think why the Sanfara phone is talked about is because it has been established or established through Intel that they receive supplies through the air. Maybe there is droppings, they have droppings out with their helicopter, we certainly it will be a helicopter or small aircraft that may take off from maybe from my uh, Niger or somewhere and we just drop supplies in certain located location for them. So maybe that is why that is coming to effect now. Maybe in the other angle They've not definitely established that they use such uh, facilities. I don't have such intel. And I will not come here and disparage the government or disparage anybody okay. for the kind of intel they have at any point in time and what they want to deploy, the kind of security army they want to deploy. Now, if the government thinks that either in Bauchi, in Benui, or in other hotspots, that supplies come from the air and there is and there is, is, is credible evidence that it can be stopped, why not? Look, let's not undermine this country. That's one thing, one, one thing that gets me at is every time we talk down our country, every time we talk down our country as if we have other countries. Now, if a government wakes up and says no fly zone, in, they have their intel. Mr. Mr. Walker. We are not sitting the office of the NSC, the office of the chief of the air staff. They have their intel. They will have their intel and they will talk down. Will it be totally effective? It's another story. Now, even, even American strategies, they all fail most times, most of them are not. Mr. So Wilcox, I, apologies, are apologies for butting in, really. I, I wanted you to address this uh, issue. I see Mr. Sakaz itching to, to say something, to react to, to your comments. But I wanted you to address the thoughts that there are powerful people behind the insurgency uh, in Nigeria because news broke out, even the Senate president here, we read that on the front page of the newspaper this morning, that some of these bandit supplies are dropped with private jets. Obviously, that costs a lot. And I don't know if you think that really lends any uh, truth to the conspiracy theories or reports, so to speak, that powerful people are sponsoring terrorism in Nigeria. Of course, certainly. Are we, is anybody doubt of that? Nobody should be oblivious of that. That this that what we are having is from blue terrorism. Now there may be international affiliation, there may be uh, there may be affiliation that come, there may be uh, the international uh, 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 side of it or cross border part of it. The issue is most of this uh, situation is from growth, and powerful people are behind it. So so powerful that they are they seem to still be untouchable or working behind the scene. Some are just play about. I mean, are you saying that state governors do not know what is happening? For instance, what's happening in Zafara? Okay. You, All right. Do you want to the state uh, uh, well, well you, you may also, you know, argue that, uh, yeah, you may also... You, yeah, but I'm just going to say, you may also argue that, you know, some uh, government that has the capacity of, you know, declaring a no-fly zone over, you know, certain states should also be able to quickly point out some of the sponsors of, um, or the, you know, where the funds are coming from, you know, for these terrorists and these insurgents. But w we need to go back to the Ms. Saka now. Uh, yes. To um, so, Mr. Share, Saka, share just like you said, the People's Democratic Party, PDP, they're claiming in one of their press conferences recently. They claim that the president has a selective approach to fighting terrorism. Uh, they cited his alleged inaction to you know, the security situation in Kaduna, in Bornu, in Katsina, in his home state. But 
He's moving quick on Zamfara, so to because speak. Because it's a PDP state. Do I, you I guess. see any truth to this selective um, approach? Claim? Yeah, they, they, we don't need to lie to ourselves. It's obvious, and I'll set another instance. PDP, I don't know. PDP has failed Nigerians and is still failing Nigerian as an opposition. But let's let's push that aside. Now look at IPOB. IPOB did not fire a single shot. To the best of my knowledge, before IPOB was proscribed as a terrorist organization, even wrongly. Because it was the army that proscribed that announced or proscribed IPO rather than a court before they did the right thing. But we have Fulani Edsmen. When I mean Fulani Edsmen, and I need to be clear with, on this, and with Nigerians, you understand me. When I say Fulani Edsmen, I'm not saying all Fulanis in Nigeria are headsmen. I'm not saying all Fulanis that are headsmen are killers. But the killing Fulani, the headsmen are Fulani Edsmen. And the Fulani Edsmen that are killing across Nigeria and across Africa. Is not, are not Nigerians. So Fulan is not a tribe domiciled alone in Nigeria. But the government did not do anything. There was a, there was a murderous killings, killings in Agatu. It took the outcry of Nigerians for two weeks before the presidency could dignify the death with a statement. Same thing with, in Plateau, in Miango. It's selective. But when cows and um, there was a retaliation, which I'm not justifying, in Taraba State, we saw the might and the presence of government in Taraba within 48 hours. Oshibaji was there as a VP, the GOC was there, Minister of Defense was there, Minister of Interior was there, the Chief of Army Staff was there. Now, to the issue of Zamfara, when, when, when well, Mr. Wilkos was talking about Intel, 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 I laugh. Where, he was, where is the Intel? Because he said, let's, 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 let's make this clear. The way that Nigerian Nigeria as a nation has not won the war on terror is because the military forces don't have bankable intel to work with. And who coordinates this, where this intel comes from? The NSA. And the NSA has, has been there for the past six years. Because the NSA coordinates the activities of the All DSS right. and the NIA. Now, America came, special forces came to, to what they called, was it not, um, last year, to, to conduct a rescue operation. Any sensible right-thinking NSA who knows there's an active cell in Nigeria. Now there was a kidnap in Kankara. There was a ki kidnap in, in Niger. Any right-thinking NSA with the right. security agency will know we start working on coordinates or probable locations. Dear Ms. Akar, we need to, uh, we need to wrap up here. Um, but I totally appreciate your time and your views this morning. You're welcome. Um, and we look, I always look forward to speaking yes. with you. We look, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to an ex extended I'm conversation on, on security. <laughs> thank you very much. And You're thank welcome. you very much, Mr. Alex De, uh, Wilcox, who joins us by... You didn't give me enough time, man. I'm, I'm not happy. You didn't give me enough time, man. <laughs> I think <laughs> for you to cut off my other program to join this, and I think, and I do have enough time to express myself. You gave Saka more time, and I will have... Oh, I, 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 I apologize for that. I'm, okay, I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, apologize. But thanks for anyway, Alex Wilcox. So we totally appreciate... Uh, the time that we had with you, we enjoyed it. And uh, we, of course, would schedule another conversation with you as quickly as possible. Uh, good morning once again. All right. Uh, that's all we have for you this morning. If you missed out on any of these conversations, remember to check us out on our uh, social media platforms at Plus TV Africa on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And, of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel at, at Plus, Plus TV, TV Africa. Africa. Yes, yeah, so I am going to remind you of what our first guest on The Breakfast said, Mr. Judy Johnson. It's the weekend. Relax. Bye-bye.